Hello and welcome to another standard video. Today I'm excited to present this red green or a gruel delirium aggro deck which mixes a lot of the new cards from Duskborn with some of our old favorites and one of the new cards is the wildfire wicker folk a two mana three two with haste also an artifact creature so it does have those two types to enable delirium and with delirium enabled aka if we have four or more card types among cards in our graveyard those types include creature land instant sorcery artifact enchantment don't have any planeswalkers in this deck and then uh, also no battles but those are additional types as well and then kindred also a type you might see on arena but there's not too many cards with that type so in this deck we can at most have six types in the graveyard we just need four of those to enable delirium in which case the wicker folk also gets plus one plus one and trample then we've got Fear of Missing Out as an enchantment creature, so this can also add two types for Delirium all by itself. A 2-3, when it enters we discard a card and then draw, not optional, but also pretty good if we're empty-handed, since then we just get to draw a card for free. And then with Delirium enabled, when the Fear of Missing Out attacks, we get to untap a creature and get an additional attack step, so that can also be quite nice, especially if we have a larger creature with maybe some plus one counters on it, as it can attack for a lot of extra damage. And then at one mana, there's the Patchwork Beastie, a 3-3 artifact creature, so once again multiple types, although it cannot attack or block unless we have Delirium enabled, so it won't necessarily attack right away. But as a 3-3, it does survive quite a few cheap removal spells that you might see, like Cut Down, also an artifact, so it survives Go for the Throat, so it is pretty resilient. And then while it sits in play, at the beginning of our upkeep, we get to mill a card, so that can also help enable Delirium in the first place. And then another nice delirium payoff is the omnivorous flytrap, a 2-4, and when it enters or attacks, if we have delirium enabled, we get to distribute two plus one plus one counters among one or two target creatures, so either one each or two on one creature. And then if we have super delirium, aka six or more card types, which can happen in this deck, then we get to double the number of plus one plus one counters on those creatures. So not only do we now get to potentially put two plus one counters on creatures, we can potentially get even more if they already had some counters to begin with so that can also get out of hand very quickly and then we've got more plus one counter synergy with Inti, which can also function as a discard outlet to quickly enable delirium and then if we discard a card we can get a plus one counter as well as giving our creature trample until end of turn can also be useful if our opponent is planning to chum block and then we also get to exile the top card of our library that we maybe still get to play if we have the mana for it and then the stubborn burrow fiend doesn't seem particularly impressive but actually plays quite nicely in this deck as a 2-2 needs to be saddled in order to trigger its ability in which case we get to mill two cards and then it gets plus x plus x until end of turn where x is the number of creature cards in our graveyard so the more creatures the better and just by saddling it even if the burrow fiend is not attacking we still get to mill two cards so that can also be a nice delirium enabler and then in the late game this could be attacking for five or six damage pretty easily and then we've got Breakout as the only sorcery in this deck, which is also perfect in an aggressive red-green deck as we get to take a look at the top six cards of our library. Then we can reveal a creature card from among them. If it has mana value two or less, we can put it straight onto the battlefield with haste. If not, we can still put it in hand. So if we find a fly trap as our only creature, we can still put it in our hand at least. But ideally, we find one of our many two drops, which gets to attack right away. Maybe attack with a four-powered wicker folk or attack with a fear of missing out and immediately get an additional attack step. Inti is also pretty good as we can immediately enable the ability so there's plenty of synergy but more importantly it also just adds sorcery into the mix essentially for free since it also will compare it with another creature and then at one mana there's the evolving adaptive no real delirium synergy but just a good creature to play early as it will gradually pick up more oil counters which will grow its power and toughness and we've got some pretty large creatures here with a beastie being a 3-3 for just one mana the wicker folk can get up to four power naturally so we can pretty often get the adaptive up to a 3-3 or 4-4 and then rounding out the deck we've got some instants as well torture tower pretty important to face the red aggro decks in the format and we even have some good synergy with bargain between all the artifact and enchantment creatures we can sacrifice to deal an additional point of damage and then a seed of hope can also cheaply fill the graveyard for us and likely find a land or creature we can put in hand and then the mana base has a few lands that can also help fill the graveyard fabled passage we can sacrifice adding land as an extra type and then the commercial district can maybe mill a card with a surveil ability so that can also be useful for delirium otherwise of course these are tapped in the early turns so we don't want too many of them and then mostly red green lands that will be untapped copper line gorge corpluzen forest and the new thornspire verge so red green aggro also picked up a nice new dual land and then a couple basics as well 
So yeah, that's the deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw. Currently missing green mana, since these will only make red initially, but still good enough to torch and then fear of missing out. Can also keep looking for more lands, so I'll give it a shot. Opponent's black-red and looks like the typical red aggro deck. Alright, now mountain can also help enable green mana. Happy if they pump up this camp since we can torch it. And yeah, opponent's gonna turn inside out, maybe thinking we're also on the red aggro deck, which typically doesn't play any removal. So now we get to torch it, not take any damage, opponent doesn't get to manifest. And they have a Heartfire Hero left over. Alright, so a couple options here. Probably start with Fear of Missing Out, since I fear of uh, missing out on Breakout here. If I don't find a creature, it would be a bit of a disaster. Discarding Beastie would add Creature and Artifacts, although next turn I could play it and play another Fear of Missing Out. Or I can discard Fear and then next turn go Beastie plus Breakout which is good too. And then we have creature enchantments, and then I just need land, for instance, to get delirium. Picked up the wicker folk, also better once we already have delirium. Opponent's got challenger and scamp, so they may not have any pump spells left. And another beastie to draw. So now we could try breakout plus beastie. And then maybe we'll grab another beastie. And then we already have delirium thanks to sorcery being an extra type. So yeah, beastie and fear of missing out can attack. Untap beastie. So that can attack twice. So we're getting in for eight damage on turn three. And still have a 3-3 left on defense. Next turn we'll play a 4-3 haste with trample, so things are looking up. Bones attacking. So if they can pump up the scamp, they can deal damage and then sacrifice it. If I block Challenger and they top decked Monstrous Rage, this would go up to 4 toughness, so it can just eat the beastie. So blocking the hard fire is probably the safest play if we want to block at all, which we're not forced to. With one card in hand, we're unlikely to die, even if they can pump this camp. But I don't mind this. Bone's gonna shock their own challenger just to enable Valiant. And finding another challenger, so yeah. Desperation mode. Hero can deal one to us on the way out. Get to mill with Beastie. Might as well. Find another torch. So yeah, this should just be game. Play the Wicker Folk. Exile your Challenger. Smash. Untap Wicker Folk. And we even get 4 damage to spare. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with what looks like a keepable hand. Even though we cannot quite play the beastie on turn one, so that's a little awkward. Opponent with a hopeless nightmare, so a discard deck. Yeah, maybe ditch the torch the tower here. Doesn't always have a ton of targets in this matchup. And then... Inti's going to be better if we can immediately attack and get some value out of it. Beastie won't necessarily be able to attack by itself, however. So, yeah, kind of a close call. I think Beastie first, also just to start enabling Delirium a bit sooner. Survives a lot of the black removal spells, like Cut Down and Go for the Throat, since it's an artifact. So it has a chance to untap here. And Breakout's not bad. Could also go for the fly trap, even though we're missing delirium. If I break out, I add sorcery. And then there's a few cards that could also help enable delirium right now that we can find with breakouts. 
But the more mana efficient play would certainly be Flytrap. So I think I'm going to stick to that. And then next turn we can double spell ENT and Breakout. If we draw a creature we can discard it, enabling Delirium. But this might die to a go for the throat, which would also conveniently add creature to the graveyard, so it's not all bad. It's going to be a bitter triumph, paying three life instead. And we get to untap, milling another fly trap, and burrow fiend the draw. So this turn can maybe start with breakouts, and then still play burrow fiend if we don't have delirium. Although I guess yeah, sorcery will already do it for us. So then Beastie can attack. Yeah, I think Inti is going to be better next turn. So yeah, let's start here, see what we get. We could get a Wicker Folk. Yeah, hits pretty hard. So we'll attack and then just play Burrow Fiend second main without saddling. So yeah, hit you for seven. Burrowfiend might die to go for the throat if they have those left. But uh, given that they cast a better triumph earlier, it doesn't seem like it. Opponent just crying with a nightmare. And the Shieldrits. Is that going to be good enough to save them? Keep milling. So we can play Inti. How many creatures do we have in Graveyard? At least three, so Burrowfiend can attack past Shieldrit. So yeah, Inti, saddle the Burrow Fiend, hoping to mill more creatures, which we did. Attack, and then discard, see what Inti reveals. And then where to put the counter? If we put it on Wicker Folk, they block Burrow Fiend, take eight. If we put it on the Beastie instead, they still block Burrow Fiend, take 8. And if I put it on Burrow Fiend itself, we would trample for 2 if they block it. And still deal 9 damage, so not quite lethal. So I think in that case I'm better off diversifying and putting the counter on the Beastie. So that if they do have some removal next turn, we'll still have some pretty good creatures left. So we'll try that. And Inti is what we found. Alright, so opponent's gonna block. We trade. And they are two mana creature trading up for a shield red feels pretty good. Bones at two. And may as well play another Inti here. Adding another creature to the graveyard. So now our opponent needs a board wipe to survive. And Gix's command doesn't even do it. So it would have to be the cover up specifically. But it looks like they don't have it. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and what do we think of our hand? Seems keepable. Might have to skip my one drop to play a tap to district. So we can play flytrap on curve. Opponent on what looks to be the red white tokens deck. Or maybe a just sky version. So we can expect a decent amount of removal. Turn one beastie. Doesn't seem bad. Maybe wait on flytrap until we already have delirium to get immediate value. And then next turn I can play a two drop. And we've got a creature in the graveyard. Can maybe break out here, or we can fear of missing out, discarding the wicker folk to add creature and artifacts. I think I like break out more. And then find a, a wicker folk anyways. Still added sorcery as an extra type. And a helix at least destroys the wicker folk, so another creature for a potential burrow fiend. Our opponent does have the caretaker's talent. Another sorcery and another fly trap. I guess we'll see what's on top. Another breakout. So that's not gonna get delirium, but if I mill it, then Beastie could maybe mill another type for us. Although the haste is nice in this matchup, so maybe I just keep it. Play a hasty Wicker Folk. Although fear of missing out getting that additional attack step could be better now before they can cast a Sunfall to wipe the board. So it's a close call. Although it's also unclear what to discard with fear of missing out right now. Yeah, I guess we'll end up milling the Breakout with the Beastie anyway, so 
I don't think I should keep it. And then I'll play the weaker folk anyway. Hit for three. Opponent is still missing double white. They can activate Fountain Port to draw with the talents. And a land now gives us Delirium. Perfect. So, play the Fly Trap. And distribute some plus one counters, and then hope they don't have a Sunfall next turn, pretty much. Just regular Delirium, no Super Delirium yet for the doubling of counters. So our opponent does make a token to draw, probably trumping the Beastie. And then they might have a Sunfall in hand, but the question is if they have an untapped White Source to go with it. That's the drawback of playing a third color, is a less reliable mana base. Opponent takes it, so probably means no sun falling coming. Opponent levels up to make an extra fish. So now we might be going all in on the trampling wicker folk. Keep on milling. And Inti can also give trample, so this turn might be just fly trap plus Inti. Can that present lethal? Because if it doesn't, we're in trouble next turn since they did play another white source. So, ENT trampling probably the beastie. And then I can split up my counters with wicker folk and beastie. So we would get uh, four additional counters plus one from ENT. So 14 trample, that should do it. If there's no additional interaction. So let's go for it. And then Fear of Missing Out is also just good to have as your last card, since it can potentially just draw a card for free. So go ahead and attack. But I will be discarding the Fear of Missing Out after all here. To Inti's ability. All right, is this good enough? Or is their opponent sandbagging a bounce spell? And that does it, it's awesome. So yeah, pretty sure they had the Sunfall, but they just weren't able to cast it in time. Okay, we're on the play and we've got a decent hand. Turn one, adaptive. Turn two, could start with a Burrow Fiend to start milling and give up on an attack in the hopes of enabling Delirium. Opponent on red with a Heartfire Hero. So potentially a matchup where we need to keep up Torch the Tower at all times. Although for now I think I still play a 2-drop. And yeah, I think I like Burrow Fiend. Fear of missing out, discarding the Wicker Folk can also be pretty good at uh, helping Delirium. And we milled Creature Land. So add Instance. And then Artifact could give it to us. Opponent's got the Swiss Spear, so not interested in blocking. It would have a Monstrous Rage for Heartfire, it would go up to 3 Toughness, so no longer dies to Torture Tower unless we bargain it. It's gonna be a Dreadmoss Ire, luckily we did not have any artifacts in play, since Ire can destroy those. Okay, so we've got a couple options here. Only the one green source, but that doesn't matter here. So, Burrow Fiend saddling the other Burrow Fiends is one way to do it. If we want to guarantee Delirium, it would be Fear of Missing Out, discarding Wicker Folk. And then I can keep up Torture Tower, which feels pretty safe. Yeah, I kind of like that plan. And then we'll still have a Burrow Fiend left over. We can start attacking. And we don't waste any saddles. Alright, so... I do not have Delirium unless I torch a tower. I think I'll just do it now. Although I guess I don't get any benefit from it here. So we could wait. Although I might get myself in trouble by waiting. Could also get rewarded. If we respond to a Valiant trigger and they're out of ways to increase toughness. Could technically cast this with Bargain if I sack the Fear of Missing Out as my enchantment. Scamp is next. All 
our opponent attacks. I'll take it. Possible we just end up clearing this camp so we can attack for lethal next turn. So right now I don't need to make the first move. Alright, take three. Anything else? End of turn, exile this camp. And then pretty sure we get there. And with the extra attack step from Fear of Missing Out especially. Opponent's gonna turn inside out, but Scamp gets exiled, so that doesn't matter. So Scamp is gone. And then Burrow Fiend, saddle Burrow Fiends, maybe add some more creatures to the graveyard and attack. And that should do it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand's not perfect, lacking some interaction as well. But double adaptive can hopefully grow powerful enough. So next turn we can go adaptive into Beastie, or we can fetch our red mana. Opponent green-white in the meantime. Yeah, maybe getting red mana is still worth it here. So we'll just hit for one and hope our adaptive doesn't get ambushed. Play another one. And then Fabled Passage will also add land into the graveyard. Right, opponent's going to cease just to gain two and draw. And up the beanstalk, so they are looking to go big. Okay. Not sure yet if they're playing more than two colors. This turn we're gonna break out plus beastie. Break out first, so we get to grow the adaptive twice. And find Inti. Play Beastie. And then for right now, probably find discarding a land. Wouldn't be able to play both red two drops in the same turn anyway. If I discard Fear of Missing Out, I guess I would have Delirium enabled already. So maybe that's actually worth it. Sadly, the Beastie will go to waste. If I attacked first, we would have been able to play it, but then I would have missed out on those plus one counters. Opponent's got the green Overlord now. Draws of Beanstalk. And they could technically have a Leyline Binding for one mana, since this counts as every basic type. Okay, let's break out again. And find, I imagine, Wicker Folk's going to be more powerful here. Also grows the adaptive some more. So this is a serious attack. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. We've got what looks like a keepable hand. The tap land could hurt us a little bit, but could still seed of hope on one, helping delirium. And then we've got options on two. The sooner we play Burrow Fiend, the better usually. I'll grab a Fear of Missing Out, I think. can always discard one FOMO to the other. But I'll still go with Burrow Fiend first, or do I? If our opponent's got Cut Down in hand, I guess they would be able to kill any of my two drops. Yeah, I'll play the Burrow Fiend, and then next turn can saddle it with a Fear of Missing Out, potentially. Okay, so can play it, see what we draw, and then they have to decide which of my creatures to remove. And they're gonna take out the Burrow Fiend, exiling it as well, so no extra creature in the graveyard. So maybe at this point I get rid of the commercial districts, and then I can play another one. Hoping that gets Delirium for me, since I might need the extra threats. Evolving Adaptive, so... That would add creature, then I still need one more type. Could also play Fear of Missing Out, discarding the Wicker Folk, and then we have Delirium. So question is if I want the Adaptive as something I can play alongside Fear of Missing Out at that point. I think I still get it in the graveyard, since there's better two drops I can find now. Opponent lets us untap, draw another land. Yeah, I don't think Delirium is 
important enough here. I think I just need the actual threats. But I can play this first and maybe things will change. Can fetch first as well. Thin out the deck a little bit. So yeah, I'm not going to have Delirium this turn, most likely. If I discard a land. Find a Torture Tower, that would be instant, which we already have. So I'll just play Wicker Folk and attack. And then, if they destroy the Wicker Folk, I guess we would have Delirium. Can also sacrifice any of these to bargain. So that could also come into play. Opponent just exiles the Wicker Folk, so once again, not adding a time for Delirium. So that is kind of annoying. And our opponent presents a blue mana. And now Vraska's fall. All right, at least we have Delirium at long last. And Beastie the draw. I think we keep land in hands in case we draw Inti, which can uh, help us discard it. So we're finally getting some damage in. So our opponent's just a poison deck after all. They could easily have more removal than we have creatures. As they're gonna drown the fear. Sure. So up to two poison. And as Cold Dweller we can exile at least. Could do that now. Could take my draw step. How would that change things? Yeah, I guess I'll still go for it. If they play a Voidwing Hybrid, that's maybe a better creature to exile so it doesn't keep coming back. But I'm going to want to get rid of the Death Toucher anyway. Alright, Breakout could be good. Finding Flytrap, which I can still cast. Or I can grab Inti, which will have haste. Can attack, get rid of the lands. Yeah, Inti might be better, just because I get to attack right away and I'm likely to find another spell I can cast. Flytrap... Maybe long-term better, but I expect them to have more removal. And just hope to find a one or two mana creature I can still play. Alright, perfect. And we're empty-handed, so Fear of Missing Out just draws a card now. So that was a nice sequence. Opponent at eight. Do they have a sweeper? I hope not. Raskas fall. So, probably get rid of the Beastie. Fear of missing out a pretty decent combo with Inti as well. Untap. So yeah, I guess I'll just go to Attackers. Attack. And then Fear of missing out untaps Inti. Inti discards Adaptive. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. So nice rally against the blue-black poison deck. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. We've got a keepable hand. Turn one could play Beastie. Opponents on the red aggro deck. Probably gonna have to keep up Torch the Tower on turn two. So then I guess I can still play Beastie, keep up Torch. So sure, we'll surveil. And Flytrap, I don't mind keeping. Creature's not a difficult type to get in the graveyard usually. And then it could be a good finisher. So Hardfire Hero. We play Beastie. And hope our opponent moves all in on this Hardfire Hero and we get to exile it. Otherwise we get to play our 2-drop next turn and keep up 1 mana. It's going to be a challenger. So I don't think I pull the trigger on Torture Tower yet. Although now they have 2 creatures that they can... Try and pump up. Alright, so Breakout versus Fear of Missing Out. I guess Fear of Missing Out gives me a guaranteed blocker, which the opponent might run into. And then I probably don't need Double Fly Trap. Find another Beastie. That's gonna have to wait. Can I also cast Orja Tower with Bargain, since we have Artifact and Enchantment to maybe sacrifice. So now we can block the Heartfire Hero, make them commit a pump spell, and exile it at least. A Might of the Meek for starters. 
Now by letting the Valiant Trigger resolve, I could get punished by a Monstrous Rage. Opponent was going to target the Challenger for uh, Valiant anyway, and yeah, they found another Might of the Meek, so this is awkward. I guess we let that resolve, since they're going to have another Might of the Meek they can cast. Targeting the Challenger. And the Hardfire Hero. So now I have to go for it. I could go for Bargain to play around Monstrous Rage, but at this point, if they have it, they have it. Felonious Rage doesn't do it. So, probably not the play they should have made. But we still take 9, so... Yeah, still a painful turn. Keep milling. So what's our situation? We have Instant, Sorcery, and Creature. So no guaranteed way to enable Delirium playing the Burrow Fiend plus another Beasties may be the safest in that regard, as opposed to Breakout, hope to find a 2-drop that maybe helps me mill. So, sure. Our opponent does have a pretty full grip. So we can saddle here. Meld the land, so we do have Delirium now. So we can attack, untap the Beastie. And then probably attack again. Most likely gonna have to chum block the Challenger. Burrow Fiend has just one creature in the graveyard, so it's not a huge improvement over a Beastie. And then next turn with Flytrap, we might be able to present lethal, depending on how many blockers they have. But yeah, Challenger is a must block. They've got another Heartfire, they can maybe give it haste. Challenger attacks. So assuming they have a Pump Spell and a Cell Sword in hand here, then we would die. So I probably have to block. But now with Heartfire, they've got an extra blocker too. Turn inside out at least doesn't let them manifest dread a bunch since their creature actually gets bigger. And they seem to have a cell sword anyway, so yeah, that's plenty of damage. Well, might have been winnable without a ley line, but a ley line was just a little bit too much for us to handle here. And the might of the meeks also kept the opponent's hand nice and full. So the uh, Torture Tower just wasn't enough. But uh, yeah, next turn, if we do get to play Flytrap, two counters on the Beastie, attack, untap it, we are presenting a decent amount of damage as well. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand is lacking a 1-drop. But uh, at least with fear of missing out, discarding a creature, we can enable Delirium. So I'll still give it a try. On the draw, this might be too slow, but... On the play, it might be okay. Opponent with Fabled Passage. Do we play Burrow Fiend first? I think I do. Since I will need to mill some additional types besides the ones I have in hand. And then next turn, the Burrow Fiend can immediately attack. Opponent getting a Plains. So it might be the Domain deck. Flytrap is an option, would be the most mana efficient. Yeah, I guess that's fine. And then maybe next turn we get to double spell. So we can saddle to mill two cards. Finding instant lands. Alright, those are two relevant types. Even though I don't get to grow the Burrow Fiend right now. Opponent also with not on my watch to exile it. So they were prepared. So no creature in the graveyard, but can address that with a fear of missing out. And a breakout. Alright, so if I go fear of missing out discarding the uh, Wicker Folk. We have Delirium, Flytrap gets bigger, and I could still maybe draw into a land to cast another 2-drop, which I cannot do if I just cast the Wicker Folk. Ah, perfect. So now, kind of like not playing Fear of Missing Out yet until it's our last card, so it can maybe just draw. And then for now... I guess Wicker Folk hits the hardest. If our opponent's got another Not on My Watch in hand. We also want to think about diversifying our plus one counters. I think I actually go for Breakout anyway. 
And we did find another Fear of Missing Out, so that's exciting. Opponent's gonna cast a Get Lost on it and discard a card. I guess this isn't optional, so now probably ditch another Fear of Missing Out, keep the Hasty Wicker Folk for next turn. And then Flytrap can give us four plus one counters to each. So that's quite powerful. Okay, so we do have some map tokens to explore. Let's see if uh, there's a response here. Inti, I'm happy to keep on top. And then with the Super Delirium from Flytrap, we can also synergize with the plus one counters we already have in play as we get to double them. So that's at least going to be six more plus one counters coming our way. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. I'm pretty sure they're taking lethal between all the extra plus one counters and the additional attack step from Fear of Missing Out. Okay, we're on the play. We've got a decent hand can start with Adaptive, so we can immediately grow it when we play a Beastie or a Breakout. Yeah, I think that's reasonable. Playing Beastie first sets up Delirium a little sooner, perhaps. And our opponent on Lizards, okay. So we'll break out and hope to hit a creature. A Wicker Folk will do. And hit you for five. I don't think staying back to block is... All that great. The Wicker Folk could maybe block the Hired Claw and trade if they pump. But then if they just remove it, we missed out on a bit of damage. Alright, might just be Mono Red after all with Challenger. So maybe not the version with the Red Leyline, but just kind of classic Mono Reds with Burn Spells. Alright, so Flytrap doesn't have Delirium yet. If I play Inti, I could discard the Beastie. And that adds Artifact and Creature, and then Torch will give us Delirium. Yeah, I think that's a fine play here. Small chance we find something with Inti's ability. Alright, just another Wicker Folk. So, Torch, Challenger now. And then Flytrap is enabled for next turn. So we're pretty far ahead. Screaming Nemesis, we can easily outrace. Opponent's gonna hang back. And then where to put the counters? Maybe on Inti. And your opponent has seen enough, get to attack, discard land to get another plus one counter, and that's game over. So yeah, good to see our red-green Delirium aggro in action, and this deck is quite impressive. Now, I think the matchup against Monored, especially if they can start with a Leyline on turn zero, is still going to favor the Monored deck. But in most other matchups, at least this deck doesn't rely on pump spells to boost its creatures, so it's less susceptible to instant speed removal. All of our creatures are individually powerful threats. So if the metagame is prepared for moderate aggro, this might be a good aggro deck to still present a nice uh, fast clock without necessarily having the pitfalls that moderate sometimes falls into. So yeah, a nice aggro deck to add to your standard collection. That's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.